Now, I have to ask you, what on earth would make you crazy enough to spend the winter in Manchester in filming? sunny Manchester. When you know you could be in Los Angeles or Sydney, it must be something pretty good, Tony. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was one of the best jobs of my life. Wow. Um, Wanderlust, we shot from November through till March, I think, in, in Manchester. So I've seen it all. You yeah. <laughs> have. There's a lot of rain in this drama. I think it we had a seen. little bit of sunlight maybe two days in that whole period. Um, and, I, you know, I've been told what the weather was like in Manchester. I'd actually never been there. But I love this job so much. I would have I would have done it anywhere. It didn't matter. I just accepted it all because it was such a good gift. Thank goodness you'd never been, though, because maybe it would have put you off just, just slightly. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite fond of it, actually. Are you? Yeah, because I had such a great time there. So tell me about your life in Manchester. What would it involve? What would it involve? Yeah. Um, a lot of work. <laughs> did you go and watch the football or anything like that? No, but my family did. I was, I was still at work when they went to um, a match at, at the uh, local, what do you call it? Stadium, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh my God, I've witnessed those kind of boatloads of guys who come in and they're kind mm. of all corralled in one area mm. so as not to pick a fight with the opposition. It was like so <laughs> archaic and amazing, but I suppose I have to manage it somehow. And what about Coronation Street? Did you check that out? We shot at, 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 that, at those stages at Granada. No way. way! Yeah. And had you ever seen an episode of Coronation Street who before? Who hasn't? <laughs> kind of skipped through one though. <laughs> How long you can't it say it's that here. That's when blasphemy. It, when it started in 19... When was it? Oh my goodness. The, 58 the 50s, or something? Yeah, it's the longest yeah, it's running amazing. Soap. Totally amazing. But look, this drama, Wonderlust, as you say, is absolutely fascinating because it tackles for big primetime BBC drama a relatively taboo subject matter in that you play the wife uh, in a relationship. The wife in a relationship, is that how you're going to set it well, up? Well, where, where, where? <laughs> the sex has obviously gone, and what's so fascinating is your character, Joy, is a therapist. So you would imagine that she knows how to deal with this Yeah, with she's, other a, she's an incredibly astute woman, but I think all of us are kind of blind to ourselves in a way. Mm. Um, there's a certain amount of ourselves that we can't see, uh, which I think is a, kind of essential in life, otherwise you could go mm. mad from really the mystery of what we're doing here it could drive one insane but um yeah she's this incredible incredible therapist she learns and gives so much to her clients um but she's having her own midlife crisis basically mm. um she has a bit of an accident it's a what would you would call a near-death mm. experience and i think once once you've kind of been exposed to something like that you really kind of get a glimpse of the context of your life mm. and you start to question how you really want to live and that's what this is about it's about she and her husband trying to figure out a way to really reconnect how to sustain long-term relationships mm. um they love each other but they're both changing and they're they're getting to know themselves or certainly joy is in a much deeper way and that can that can kind of change the dynamics mm. a bit and it does pose the question tony as to whether it's important to explore sex outside of a marriage. That's part of it. I mean, marriage, the institution of marriage was introduced at a time when people didn't live as long as mm. we live. So, um, it, you know, and life is change. Yeah, see, it's, it's, that's all you can kind of count on. So, yeah, being able to change together um, and support each other, I guess, is is what people need to aim for. But, um, yeah, they're willing to try anything to try and mm. keep keep themselves afloat. Mm. Yeah. I just think we're all such sheep. We're kind of born into this world and mm. we subscribe to a certain kind of way of living without any kind of real thought as to how you want to authentically spend your time on planet mm. Earth. And, um, and I guess this kind of questions all of those mm. societal expectations and norms. And... Mm. And I think that this couple, um, Joy and Alan, are actually really very brave to co kind yeah. of try and look beyond um, what they've what they've been, what they've grown, uh, what they've what we all kind mm. of see as familiar, really. Absolutely. Well, I was actually having this debate with my friend at, at the weekend, not related to the show, but he was saying that he did believe that there is still one person for life, and that that he is, there is natural. Yeah. Whereas I don't think. <laughs> I am in that camp. Where, where do you stand? 
Um, I think you learn from so many different people and you will only learn from those people if you're open to the experience and there are different levels of connections that you have and I think ultimately your growth will come from your ability to really understand yourself and yeah. go deep within yourself because then you, you do start to connect with other people on mm. a deeper level. You can only ever go as deep as you are with yourself, mm. I think. And there are some parallels to this character in terms of your real life. How did you relate what the character is going through to your own personal life? And also, did you discuss with your husband? This, he, this um, he read the... I think he read a couple of scripts, and he's seen the entire season now, and he loves it. He thinks yeah. it's so incredible. Um, and it's a, such a beautiful world. Mm. These people are so likeable. It's so warm. Um, you know, you, uh, you're so fond of each of them, even as they're kind of flailing and grasping and trying yeah. to figure themselves out. It's very messy. It's very lifelike in that way. So I, I love that it is very true. There's a real mm. honesty to it. And I think it's quite frank, you know, about a lot of things that we tend to kind of sweep under the carpet mm. because it's too uncomfortable. Like monopoly, I guess, whether it's something that should be sacrosanct. Yeah, each to their own. There's no, there are no rules in life. You can mm. do what you want. And do you have, have a personal view on it? Well, I'm married, so that probably gives you a hint about <laughs> what I believe in. So you subscribe to, but to I think a traditional about marriage. It, yeah. you know, why wouldn't you think about it? There are so many options about how to spend your time here and what, what's important to you, what your values are, yeah. what you believe in, who you connect with. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are no rules. I think people tend to forget that they have the option of living the way they want to live. Absolutely. Now, obviously, Tony, it's a little bit racy. Uh, how was that for you when your husband has to watch those scenes? We were all cool about it. I mean, I was a little bit nervous um, when we initially started filming those scenes because I didn't really know the other actors very well. But over the course of the show, when you you know know people, I and mean, really, I could I could trust all of these guys. Yeah. They were so um, respectful and so easy to work with. Such lovely people. Um, like it could, it could not have been easier. It could not have been more yeah. comfortable. It was really great. No. Um, but yeah, it's so weird that people would say it's taboo because, you know, as Nick Payne, our brilliant writer mm. of this show, s has said, it's like it's like walking or eating. It's part of who we are. Why do we? Mm. Why are we scared of it? And I think there is a cultural change coming. I really do. I think the fact that this show is going to be broadcast in prime time on BBC One is actually very indicative of, of the cultural change that we are experiencing. But I guess that can be difficult for some people to cope with. As I said, life has changed, so catch up, it's 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now this show as well, it's very English, it's very British, you know. You, and yet very you, universal. Well it is, because of course it's going around the world. Um, well I'm Australian Netflix. and I really related to mm. all of the characters and everything they're going through, not just like, my middle-aged section of, you mm. know, the story is about some, some kids as well and, mm. and uh, it, a whole bunch of people at different ages and, and they have different trajectories and it's a myriad of complicated, like, um, it's a psychological web from yeah. every di different angle. It's so beautiful. So you didn't have to, like, put any type of English hat on or, or you know, you've obviously got a great English accent in, in the show as well. <laughs> like... Does that involve work? Do you have to get into a different headspace? Or was it easier that you were actually living and filming in Manchester? So yeah, oh God, that really probably. helps. Although I'm, I'm, we're not, it's actually set in London, even though we were mm. shooting in Manchester. So it wasn't a matter of absorbing that accent. But just, yeah, I think there's a definite energy in England. It's very different to LA, which is where I've been based for a few years. Um, I think it's more familiar to me. I think there's a similar sensibility yeah. between us, Australia and England. Um, we're a colonised country. Um, so that might have something to do with yeah. it. But it was, I think the writing is so wonderful and um, it all seemed incredibly clear to me. When something's so well written, it, it, I don't have to kind of real, make a real effort to try and understand it or make it real because it just seems absolutely obvious how I should mm. play it. Now your career goes from strength to strength. Obviously you were in Hereditary earlier this year, which has probably become the most talked about horror movie of recent times and I know this isn't new for you because you've obviously been nominated for an Oscar before and, and you've won the Golden Globe but there is talk Tony of this potentially being another <laughs> Oscar nomination for you is that a surprise because it's really rare for a horror to get that type of buzz it's really rare for any film I do to get yeah. that type of buzz um 
Oh, look, you when we made when we made that film, I mean, I, I again, I, when I read it, I, I it was the same as, as Wonderlust. I knew that I had to do it immediately. Yeah. Um, and as we were making it, there was um, there was a, a kind of air of it being something special. Um, but you never really know. And it's just it's gone gangbusters. It's bonkers. It, um, it's it's com it's completely surprising and very exciting, to be honest. Um, but as far as far as awards go, I mean, my experience is the making of of the film, and it's very flattering to even mm. have those words uttered. But it's you know, it's not something I hang my hat on at all. But you must be happy though that these great roles keep coming. Because yeah, of again, course I am. We are in. I think a much, much more emboldened time when it comes to female actresses as yeah, well. Yeah, because we force people to <laughs> write for women, that's why, yeah. because we've raised our voices and made it happen. But I have to say, I have been so lucky. There was, mm. I don't know why I had this notion, but um, when I was 21 and Muriel's Wedding had come out, and I remember being offered films that were kind of similar and thinking, mm -mm, I'm not going to, mm. I'm not going to repeat what I've done. So I've kind of, that's kind of, I've never had a, any kind of grand plan, but I just know that I never want to repeat myself and and I do have a very, very clear uh, knowledge about if I should do something. It's it's just a kind of gut instinct. And obviously, as you say, people are, female actresses are now making things happen for themselves. You have your own production, production company, yeah. company as well. Was that important for you so that you are to an extent in control of not just your own destiny, but also working on projects that maybe wouldn't necessarily... And also the kind obvious. of stories that are told. Um, mm. So, yeah, the, I guess the answer would be yes. I'd wanted to do it for a long time, and I just... Uh, you know, things happen when they're meant to. Um, and, yeah, it's nice to have a few kind mm. of stories in the pot, different kind of levels of readiness, and um, I'm excited to, to make them when we get around to it. Now, obviously, I haven't seen the conclusion of Wonderlust yet, but I love what I have seen. Great. Is the door open potentially for a series two? Absolutely. If, if we don't, I'll be furious. <laughs> I'm desperate to do it again. It's one, honestly, it's one of the best winter. jobs of my life. I would do it in Manchester. I would do it on the moon. I don't care where we do it, as long as we do it. It is so, so great. And you think there is potential yep. for the story to Absolutely. come back as well? Yep. And so you're committed to yep. a TV show? I'd gladly do it again and again. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Now, I also have to ask you, you did bring up Muriel's Wedding, one of my uh, favourite ever oh, yeah, movies. I did. Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. did, Tony. I'm putting it in your words. But no, it's one of my favourite movies of all time. Oh, that's Obviously, so sweet. Obviously, there have been constant rumours about whether could there one day be Muriel's Wedding to the sequel. Uh, how do you feel about really? that possibility? Um, I can't imagine what that would be. You know, they made a musical out of it, which yeah. is about to tour around Australia. I saw it in Sydney Christmas time, I think. And I was a little dubious and a little concerned about it. Um, it blew my mind. It was so good. I really hope it comes to uh, the West End. It's absolutely brilliant. And maybe that's the way it could live on in there the There you screen. go. It could be a film version of the musical. Yeah.